Hello, my name is Michael Bean, and this is your lesson for myfreeactingclass.com for Tuesday, November the 3rd. Uh, something that I always forget to say in this intro is that I am an acting teacher, and I've been an acting teacher for 20 years now, which makes me feel very old, um, because I am, sort of. Uh, but it does mean that I've been doing this for a long time, and I'm still enjoying myself, so there's got to be something to that. Uh, today, what I want to talk about uh, is, and what I'm hoping that I can use you to help me explore and demo for me, uh, is a question uh, that was asked by Eve, who turns out to be here uh, for today's lesson. Last week, she asked, how do you get in character? Yeah, and it's just, it's such a good question that it really deserves like a full half hour of lesson. And I mean, even then we're just gonna barely scrape the surface. Yeah, so one of the things that, top level that I want to throw out there is the same thing that I saw on Thursday, which is that I believe that, that character is an illusion. That, that character is the story that other people make when they watch it. Yeah. And uh, the, I've told this particular, or given this particular example in class before, uh, but I think it's useful to revisit, which is that, okay, so you know, if I've got, um, you know, I pick any one of the folks in this lesson, and I, in some kind of creepy way, I suppose, have video footage of 24 hours of your life. But like, I have video footage of like all 24 hours. Like, there's just been like a little camera that's been following you for like all 24 hours of that. And then I show an audience any minute and a half of it. The, you know, and, and I have full editing power. You know, so I can show like only the like 10 seconds where you trip over something, you know, and then the like 15 seconds where you couldn't get a jar open, you know, and then like the reaction after you drop something on your foot, you know, and so then, you know, we're looking at you and we're like, wow, this person's really a jerk. Like they're angry all the time. What a horrible person because I'm only showing them a minute and a half. You know, and if I have that total freedom, you know, to, um, and edit out only the select bit, then probably in any one 24 hour period, you know, there's a vast range of characters uh, that I could make you come across as, if that makes sense. You know, now, if we're talking about your whole life, you know, then, uh, there, you know, um, then we've got even more examples. So I wanna start with, uh, by you, I wanna use this as an example, sort of a nothing script, you know, something uh, that I uh, pulled for these lessons a while ago, like it's just a single line of dialogue. Right, this is the kind of thing uh, that you know, yeah, you will periodically have to audition for in your auditioning life. There it is. Uh, the, uh, these are the actual audition sides. Uh, this is from quite some time ago. And there's literally one line of dialogue. So, uh, and the role is cashier. You know, so uh, open age, you know, open ethnicity, open gender. For something like this, they're going to get masses of people you uh, apply for it. You know, and you're just gonna have to read the breakdown carefully to get a sense of what's going on. Hey, Christina, great to see you. It's been a while. Uh, so anybody wants to try this particular one, you know, I'm going to, um, I'm gonna use Kira as an example, you know, uh, because there's some technical uh, adjustments, you know, that I can ask her to make like really quickly, uh, just because she's wearing glasses and she's got her hair down. You know, and so I wanna show you um, how much we can change her character by like changing her appearance before we even get into changing her delivery. And then we can play with some of the rest of you with sort of changing the delivery if you want. Uh, so if we look at this at Degrassi, episode 711, owner of a lonely heart. Um, so Project Arch is officially bust, da da da. You know, the, what we've got is this single line of dialogue for the cashier. cashier. Start, line, end. That's it. Marco heads to the cash, Ellie following. He has the shirt to the cashier who rings it up. Uh, Kira, give me this line. Sixty-nine fifty in total, cash. Right. It's it's a nothing line. You know, the um, I have one that I helped somebody audition for just recently. We, we were doing another tape, and she's like, "Oh yeah, I've also got this like barista, you know, to record. Can we do that?" Like these roles come up, you know, it and it helps prompt. Like if we're going to keep looking at the script, like it does help prompt. Uh, you know this interaction between Marco and Ellie and you know it's he's like ah oh, I thought I had it and you know pay me back when you have it I feel terrible you know that it's like it's so we, the cashier they can't skip it they can't cross it out 
You know, so they're going to hire somebody and pay them to be on set all day just to say this one line of dialogue. I mean, it's actually a pretty good gig if you get it, right? Like it looks right on IMDb. You're like, yeah, that's another move I, I was in. <laughs> I'm amazing. Uh, you know, you get to potentially uh, be on set you know, with uh, the leads and like, okay, so my personal example there is uh, I was in the movie uh, Travelers, Travelers, something like that uh, with um, Aaron Eckhart and Jennifer Aniston, you know, and I was a hotel clerk. And I, th I think I had like three words or maybe like two and a half words, but I spent all day leaning on a hotel desk with Jennifer Aniston, just hanging out while she set up. And then over and over again, while we stood there, Aaron Eckhart ran up and gave this like impassioned, intense monologue over and over and over again. It was an amazing day on set. You know, uh, I, like I, at the time I was teaching a whole bunch of teen girls and I was like, God, I know this is dumb, Jennifer Aniston, but like, we take your photo with me because I want to show the teen girls in my class. And she was like, that's fine. Like she was really sweet about it, but like it was clear that she was just like so over the experience. But then the, um, but just like the real human connection uh, with these folks, you know, and getting to see them work. Yeah, you know, it's a feature film, looks good on my resume. But, you know, I long ago left, started leaving that bit out of my demo because, it, because I actually appear for like a second and a half in the movie. Where it's one of those things that like, I don't know, you know, uh, sometime later, you know, uh, when it's like, all the strange things you do in your career, <laughs> you know, like I could include into like sort of very fast demo reel, right along with me juggling, you know, and uh, you know, me in full body makeup. Uh, so uh, if we look at uh, Kira, you know, and we spotlight Kira for a minute, you know, again, uh, the line of dialogue uh, is um, 659 in total, uh, period, cash, question mark, <laughs> right? And so, Okay, you got, here's the cashier. She looks like this. You know, she gives us the line. Just gives us the line of dialogue. Sixty-nine fifty in total, cash. Okay, great. You know, and then uh, if you uh, like, put, uh, take off the glasses and put your hood up. Right. So how old she is, you know, uh, on camera has now changed dramatically. You know, like so much about sort of what we assume about her as a person has changed and she hasn't had to do anything for that yet. Like she's literally just changing wardrobe. So much of what we think of as character is illusion. And if you were meeting Kira for the first time, you know, like this, then you would have a different impression of her, you know. Now, uh, keep your eyeline uh, sort of mostly down, you know, uh, like you just really don't, uh, so that, uh, and let's see what that does to the emotional sense of it, again, without you having to adjust performance. Can you give me the line again? 69.50 in total. Cash. Okay, and so even where her eyes are looking, you know, read as part of character. You know, and then you get to do the actual fun stuff, you know, so you know, if you had in this breakdown uh, that uh, the uh, cashier was like super bubbly, you know, the, and it was like bubbly cashier, you know, and so your job was to like sort of be, I don't know, friendly and annoying and distracting, you know, for these people, you know, then what would that sound like? 69.50 in total. Cash? Good. And thinking about your wardrobe, if you were taping that audition, what would you wear so that we can picture it in our head? Uh, you know, I might wear my hair curly and, and down with like a bright yellow t-shirt or something like that. <laughs> yeah, and these, these directors or producers, you know, uh, are unlikely to see Kira in either picture or video, you know, for another six months or a year, you know, after they see her in the bright yellow t-shirt. So likely when they see that, you know, the casting director is going to have some more familiarity, but the actual decision makers are going to be experiencing her each time, almost as though for, uh, they're seeing her for the first time. Right. You know, now if it's, um, uh, Melissa and I you know, talked about branding, you know, uh, a while ago, you know, and, uh, and so was it like serious, professional, severe, you know, and so um, you, as though, uh, and so imagine that you've got the breakdown for the same cashier, but it says like serious, professional, severe, you know, and uh, so you want to like keep really still, make direct eye contact, you know, uh, and, you know, just basically punish them for wasting your time, you know. Uh, so, uh, oh, and it looks like right now, Melissa, you're leaning on the desk, you know, so you probably want to like straighten up. There you go. <laughs> yeah. 
and action. 69.50 in total, cash. <laughs> right, and then uh, and if you were auditioning for this, and you and if you were like, okay, yeah, pff, it's dumb, but I'm like, I'm, I'll tape it because I got my setup. It's only going to take me a minute. What would you wear to tell the story? Like so that we can picture, you know, you're like, you know, so that'll be cashier. You know, so you, so wearing a power suit probably isn't, you know, the right idea, uh, right fit. Right, uh, just a button up shirt. Yeah, maybe in in blue, lightly blue. Right, that, uh, that so much of what we do with it is wardrobe. You know? And then if we're gonna move sort of outside of wardrobe, you know, into uh, kind of the other ways that we wanna play with this. Yeah, and I hope this is interesting uh, for you all. I know that the script itself is not interesting. So Christina, you left your video on, so I'm picking on you now. Hi. <clears throat> Hi. Um, you know, the, uh, what if they said the cashier was like, it was dumb. You know, and said in the breakdown, like, you know, just totally dumb. You know, the, uh, let's give you a crack at it first, and then let me talk to you about what I often do with students when they're asked to play dumb. You know, but we'll get the result first and just see what happens, right? So uh, the, the line again, you know, is 69.50 in total cash, question mark. Uh, stand by, you know, and action. 6.59 in total cash. <laughs> right, you know, now, um, one of the things uh, that you can sometimes play with you know, is one version of character, right? Like the her sort of like bafflement, the eyeline, the uh, uh, toque, you know, these all come together to give us a picture of like, oh, here's who she is as a person. We're going to make assumptions about each one of these. Film is a visual medium. You know, and so much of our experience when we're acting is how am I feeling? But so much of the experience with people watching is what are they seeing? Right, yeah, and so I, it baffles me that I have students who, who come to class, you know, and students who've been coming to class for years even, who don't bother with wardrobe, as though what they wear is not gonna have any influence on how they feel, you know, uh, and what they wear is not gonna have any influence on the story they're telling. You know, and you can use lessons like this, you can use the classes you're taking to experiment with that. You know, I mean, I hope that over time you get a sense wardrobe-wise of what you wear to tell different stories of characters. Okay, so um, there's a particular version of Dumb uh, where uh, if you play really happy, you know, and you just slow it down, and so just like, just, just really enjoy it. You know, the, uh, give, give me a long pause first where you just look at me. Just like, just, yeah, like no, no, not, not, that's you playing Dumb. Just now, just give me the pause and just be really happy. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Stay with me. Oh, we lost you. Oh no, she's gone. Bye. She smiled too Bye. much. Okay. <laughs> okay, she's back. Uh, the okay. Stand by and action. Six fifty nine total cash. Right. Um, you could also use pacing or timing to tell the character. Oh, yeah, you know, and so this um, this time say six, and then pause for what feels like way, way too long. While you look down at the price tag and at the monitor again, and you enter it very slowly and manually in your calculator for a third time, right? Uh, so like, just make us really wait for it. Like really make us suffer. Okay, stand by and action. Six. Fifty-nine total um, uh, cash. <laughs> Okay, it's a totally different impression of who the character is. Yeah, thank you, Akritsin. That's like really fun and silly. And yeah, like we might tweak it a little bit more for uh, realism. You know, I've talked about this uh, before that what we're going for is something that is uh, like realistic, believable, and something that's as expressive as possible. And very often when you're exploring content, it's a good idea to try both. You know, it's a good idea to take it to the you know, uh, realistic, believable side to go, okay, great, I'm gonna drop it down and do the like super stripped down, simple CW version of it, you know, uh, and then I uh, take it all the way to the other side. You know, so Christina just gave us like a very expressive version. You know, maybe it's not the right fit for Degrassi, but it's really fun. Yeah, you know, and we can take that pacing and sort of be inspired by it and do like, you know, maybe a slightly simpler version of it. Now, um, Eve, have you ever done uh, my CW acting exercise? You haven't? Oh, fun. Okay, so let's do that. That's one of my favorites. Uh, just tip your camera down a little bit because we want to make sure we don't get the space over your head. 
Uh, right, so right now uh, you are, yeah, uh, even, even more. You basically want your eyes to be uh, two thirds of the way up. You know, so if we cut off your bun a little bit, that's probably okay. <laughs> Uh, right, so the the line again, you know, is six fifty nine in total cash. You know, but you know, for uh, CW, and this is like really half a joke. You know, the CW is the network where everybody has to look super pretty, uh, and so people's cheekbones. You know, it, and so if you look at the cast, you're like, well, at least half these people were cast because they're ex models or just have amazing cheekbones, and then they have these like really skilled actors to kind of like fill out the ranks. You know, because if like if I'm a model and I can't act my way out of a paper bag. You know, it is, but I keep things really simple and you do all the heavy emotional lifting of the scene, then we look like we're having an amazing acting scene. Does that make sense? Yeah. You know, and so um, if, uh, if I'm a director and I'm like, okay, so you know, like Eve's got these making cheekbones, but you can't act right of a paper bag. Uh, you know, like here, so, I, so I'm gonna try do, uh, doing this with her. So, you know, so I might do something like this. You know, uh, first give me the line and be as, as terrible an actor as you possibly can. Like, oh, like as though you're reading it off the page, but badly. You know, go. Six fifty nine in total cash. And I'm like, oh my god, what? Ah, but like she's so she's, she's so pretty. So like we'll have to you know do something. And then I'm like, okay, okay, wow, that's that's great. I'm gonna keep validating you because I don't want to hurt your feelings, but also it's not gonna work. Um, okay, so just just say it really quiet, like really really quiet, like like kind of like not quite a, a whisper, but just like just above a whisper. So just say it in, in like that, and and do nothing with it. Go. Six fifty nine in total cash. Good, e even less. Do even less, and, and like I know it feels kind of weird, but like just actually take it down to like this kind of husky whisper. Six fifty nine in total cash. And you see this in CW shows all the time. It's where, where like characters are delivering their lines like this, and she's enjoying herself, so she's smiling probably a little too much for the exercise. You know. So the next step is, you know, um, look at me and say, "This is really important." This is really important. Good. Now say the line like you said that, but say it in that little whispery voice. Six fifty nine in to in total cash. <laughs> right, but and even more, even more, like really, right, like take it down to the whispery voice. Stay really still and make now oh, and now add direct eye contact. Like you're gonna look at her and you're not gonna blink. Go. Six fifty nine in total cash. <laughs> right, and so now she's <laughs> like, you, we see this and when like things are exploding and bad things are happening and now if you really wanted to go to the next level and this is just you know, this is where it uh it uh, gets into um it'll feel exaggerated or be silly but also then you watch these shows and you're like man half the people are doing this is this little eyebrow furrow here like whatever your version of that is add the eyebrow furrow right you know like uh, and i don't recommend ever doing this for those of you who want care about being good actors Please do not take this piece of advice. I just am doing this partly for fun and to show you how physical character choices can be. Uh, and also so that you start watching CW shows and going, oh my God, they're doing the eyebrow furrow. Right? As the, and the combination of like a really quiet voice that lets you know, us imagine that you're feeling serious things, but we don't know what they are. And of course you don't know what they are either because you know, you can't act, right? But, uh, uh, but it lets us imagine that there's things going on there. You know, and uh, the direct eye contact and the intensity that says, this is really important. I don't know why, because I can't act, but it is really important. And that's all that matters. You know, and then if you add the eyebrow furrow, so people are like, oh, she's really feeling it. Like something's really happening there. You know, and so now uh, add the eyebrow furrow for me. Okay. Let me see the furrow. Even more. Yeah, yeah not up. Yeah, down. Like, like you're frowning. You basically go scowl. You're, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, keep that eyebrow furrow. I know it feels weird. Ah, no, don't smile. Keep the furrow. Yeah, yeah, good. You know, and now with all the intensity, but in that like quiet kind of whispery voice, say the line. 6.59 in total. Cash. And it's weirdly believable when she does all the things, isn't it? Like if the character breakdown, for the character, you know, said, um, tough, you know, or uh, like mean or intimidating, you know, the like, yeah, the pink sweatshirt would, would have to go. Um, you know, but like if she put on, I don't know, black lipstick and a you know, ripped t-shirt or something, you know, the, uh, and did what we just saw, then one line, even though Eve may not be identified as tough at all. In fact, she might be like, oh my God, I'm not tough, I have feels. We could tell that story on camera and the decision, decision makers could be like, oh yeah, she's one of those girls who's like, you know, the like teen girl who's like trying too hard to be tough. 
you know, but like is just totally committed to it. And you're like, yeah, totally buy that as for the convenience store, right? Like the, um, that you just need to be believable within the world that you're in, in that style. You know, which is why I think uh, Christina's sort of very expressive version, if she was playing in a comedy, still probably falls within the realm of believable. You know, now, the, the other piece of Eve's question on Thursday, which is the, like, how do you, um, when I was answering the question, I was like, well, like, first, character is an illusion. You know, so that's what I attempted to show you today. Character is an illusion. You know, it has a lot to do with understanding the way people perceive things and then just being creative about the way you explore your material. And then beyond that, like, how do you know how to get there? I think you look very carefully at the script. Like you read the script carefully, which is what we're gonna to do tomorrow. You know, Wednesdays are our story day, so we're gonna look uh, in detail at a script and just do that mining that Laura Bertram talked about in her lesson from a couple of weeks ago. Uh, the, of going through details and going like, okay, there's these little words that are sort of scattered through the stage direction. They can be clues to point us you know, in the direction of the story that the writer wants to tell or the director wants to tell because you know, we, we're all looking at that same script. And so that's what we've got as a jumping off point. So if I can find something where I've also got the breakdown, so you've got that for clues as well. Uh, and then the piece after that you know, is how do you invite that story into your body? You know, and that's another whole lesson. You know, I haven't touched that you know, since this summer. So my thought is that next Tuesday, you know, I will come back and take another crack at you know, how do you get those feels into your body, right? So I've looked at the story. I've set it up so that you know, my character looks tough and I don't have to do as much work. I've set it up technically so the framing is supporting me in that, um, which can be as simple as like, uh, is it, am I looking slightly up? You know, or I'm looking slightly down, right? So I know for me that you know I do a lot of authoritative characters, and so I actually make the camera just very slightly lower than my eyes because looking down at you like this is just that much more likely to read as authoritative. Now, what does it say about me that I also do that every time I teach a lesson? Mm, I think it says that this is just the easiest possible setting on the thing that raises my laptop. That's I'm, that's what I'm going to decide, that, uh, that there is no deep ulterior motive, but maybe. Uh, the, right, so we're setting up the technical things. You know, uh, I'm going to sort of, uh, so if I'm going up for a character that's tough, you know, like, okay, the, the beard, the scruff, I'm going to stay still, I'm going to make direct eye contact, I'm going to be nice and close in the frame, I'm going to play with like, okay, when do I lean in? You know, I'm definitely not going to back up, you know, technical, technical. You know, then I'm going to look at the story and go, okay, I'm getting the beats and I'm understanding this right. Uh, and, that, and then the piece after that is, okay, now I'm going to investigate my life and I'm going to investigate the story and I'm going to investigate my physical body and I'm going to play with different things that get those results in my body and I'm going to look to see which ones work, right? It, well, because I'm running it through that dual lens of, does it feel right to me, but also does it tell the story? You know, and if I have to make the decision between those two, you know, then I'm allowed to decide to basically choose the one that works on camera. It's like, well, yeah, it still feels kind of fake, but oh, actually when I watch it, I totally buy it. Right? Like Eve's last take, there's no way that Eve was inside there going like, wow, I really feel it. 6.59, oh, feelings. You know, but she was so committed to it uh, that we believed that the feeling was there. You know, and so as you are approaching particularly character as an actor, I would recommend asking yourself those nested questions, right? Is character a feeling or is character a story that the audience makes? And this is why I, I'm a very strong proponent, even if you're going into in the room auditions, you know, which it's gonna be a while before you do that, uh, to record yourself so that, you can, so that you don't have to make that decision in the moment. You don't have to guess if it's coming across right. There's some of those technical things where it's like, oh, right, my eyes just like moved around a little bit and it totally wrecked the effect. Like I was trying to be tough, you know, and I had this whole idea that I was going to like check him up and down to see if he had weapons and, you know, like this would look all tough. But actually when I do it, it just looks kind of nervous. Okay, going to have to scrap that piece of, you know, physical action, right? It felt right, felt totally right. I watch it, didn't quite look right. So we'll see if we can play with some of that uh, when we break down the scene tomorrow. And then uh, Carly Warkington, uh, actress extraordinaire, is going to join us for Thursday. 
Uh, I already have a guest penciled for next Thursday, uh, Rogi Yu, uh, who uh, works with the Arts Club. Uh, he has a ex very extensive uh, film and TV resume. He's a very, very funny guy and a teacher uh, is going to join us. And then the week after that for our guest slot, uh, I have uh, Annalise Tilling and Aaron Lally, who used to be assistants for Kareen and Heike uh, in the sort of heavy hitter casting directors in North Van. And when Kareen and Heike started taking a step back last year, guess who they started passing the work off to? So uh, Aaron and Annalise are going to join us and talk about their process. And um, that'll be really fun, I think, because we'll get the some casting directors who are just it's still new and exciting for them, basically. Uh, and it's a great time to get people. Uh, I also have uh, Kara Edie, who's part of uh, Chris and Kara, uh, who's already uh, agreed to be our casting director guest for December. So back on track. Um, I will have this video posted to YouTube uh, within the next half hour, because if I don't, it'll, they'll pile up for three weeks again, like they did before. Uh, if you want to see any of the past videos, including the casting director videos, you can find the link to the YouTube channel at myfreeactingclass.com. Uh, and a reminder that Mondays are self-tape review day. You know, so what I love most is, you know, I mean, I'll watch whatever you send, even if it's long. You know, I'll probably only play 30 seconds of it in class, but we'll use that to talk about camera technique. And I will also use it to uh, give what I hope are helpful pointers uh, on your material. So, and if you do not have a scene, if you're like, ah, I haven't been auditioning in ages or don't have something, email me, info at myfreeactingclass.com uh, and I will send you a short scene. Obviously, if I don't know you super well, you know, I, it won't be something that's like laser beam targeted right at you, but at least it'll be something to practice with, you know, and uh, you're gonna get those from casting anyway. Okay. Can I do uh, like a slate, Michael B? Pardon me? I do like a slate. Oh, of course, yeah, yeah. You want to um, the I uh, you want to jump in and uh, and be our our uh, cashier. Oh no 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 uh, for Monday. Oh for now nah, for Monday. Oh, I thought you meant like right now. I was like, no, no, no. Oh, do you feel left out? Of course you can play, come, come play with us. <laughs> the uh, no, there's no need to do a slate. You know, honestly, um, if, even if you, I mean, you can do one uh, if you want the practice doing one. Uh, but I'm not going to play your slate because, yeah. you know, I want to you know, keep your private details private, especially if I'm you know, putting it on YouTube later, you know, just okay. to talk about the acting. And besides, I, you have come here all the time. I know you. You don't need to introduce yourself okay. to me. Um, all right. I've kept, went just a little over 4.30. Uh, thanks for coming, everybody. What a pleasure to see your faces. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow to break down a story in detail. And uh, then guest on Thursday and Leanne Lapp on Friday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Hi, Thanks, everyone. Michael. Thank Thanks, you. Bye. 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 Bye